Welcome to Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails. Today is January 5th and I'm beyond reasoning uh, on these whitetail deer now. I've kind of given it up. I'm just going to try stuff and see if it works and the things that are supposed to make sense haven't been working so we're going to pretend like today is November 5th and we're going to go to one of my favorite rut stands. It's a, it's a stand we hunted a couple of times uh, back in November. It's a really cool spot on a little narrow ridge, but it doesn't make any sense for this time of the year uh, for an afternoon hunt. I think for a morning hunt, it really makes sense because you can come into it from below. You'll see that when we get there, but to approach it from the top of the ridge in the afternoon, I mean, in theory, that's where the deer are. But that doesn't mean that they can't be coming from someplace else too. It could be uh, between a bedding area or a couple of bedding areas and a feeding area. Um, or it could be nothing. You know, I, I think it's, that's, that would be at its best, is it does lie between a couple of bedding areas to the west and then uh, that corn plot on top of the ridge. So any deer that would be coming from that direction, which is a bunch of timber with no food other than acorns, um, coming toward that food plot, they would possibly pass us where we're going to be sitting. Uh, it's, it's a, like I said, the stuff that that has made sense in most years for the late season hasn't been working this year, so we're just gonna try some stuff. If nothing else, it'll be fun. It's a really cool spot. I like hunting there. I think Ethan does too. Yeah. It's one of the prettiest spots on the farm, so we'll have a enjoyable sit. Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails is brought to you by Redneck Blinds, Coat of Silence Apparel, Hunt Stand Pro Whitetail, Fuse Accessories, Elevate tree stands, B3 releases and broadheads, and Hoyt. We decided to park right at the, basically at the base of the tree. It's about 10 yards away behind me. It's always tricky trying to figure out where to park because it's always going to be, you know, the machine's going to be sitting someplace. The deer are going to see it and maybe spook from it or maybe they'll smell, you know, our scent where we walk in. I don't think they'll see these until they're within bow range. So, I mean, if it's something that we want to shoot, I should already be at full draw. And if not, we spook it. You know, there's really not that much lost. You know, at this point in the season, might not be something we would do on November 5th, but I'm not too worried about doing it on January 5th. Maybe the most interesting thing about this stand, other than the fact that it's in a really pretty spot and sets up really well for bucks that are traveling during the rut, is the fact that deer can go by on either side of this tree without smelling us if we have the right wind. You've got to have a wind that blows off the top of the ridge out over the valley below. And because the train drops off pretty sharp to the northeast in this spot, a southwest wind will carry our scent uh, high enough that deer on the downwind side won't smell us. It'll, it'll go over the top of their head. And it, it works best in conditions like this where there aren't very many leaves on the trees. That way um, the wind doesn't swirl through the leaves and carry your scent down. It makes a nice you know, clean shot right through the foliage or right through the timber. Um, you have to be probably about 25 feet above the deer with a steady wind. If it's gusting, it won't work either. And if you drop down over the side of the ridge, or you're down over the slope, 
then you get too much swirling just from the way that the the wind goes over the top of the ridge that'll carry your scent down too so you need to be pretty close to the top a steady wind without a lot of, of leaves in the tree and uh, or even the trees around you and your scent will just blow out clean over the top of the deer we hunted that way um, back in November when we were in this spot and we had I think at least uh, two small bucks go by us if not three I can't remember but I know they went by on the downwind side on that trail this to the north of the stand about 15 yards away and they didn't pick us up so it worked really well um, it's just something to kind of keep in mind if you got a situation like this you, know, you can set it up so that under the right conditions that no deer on any side of you can smell you. We've got about 30 minutes left and we have not seen any deer. <laughs> and I'm so tired of saying that. I'm not discouraged to really, because, you know, I still love to hunt. It would just be more fun to produce these episodes to show you guys if there were deer in them. I almost feel sorry for you to watch these. And, you know, day after day, day after day, we go without seeing any. It's amazing. Um, probably this is a morning spot. You know, like I said earlier, this isn't the way it should be hunted, but there's plenty of, of timber ground and bedding areas and undisturbed area uh, in that direction. Isn't it like a mile to the next? I mean, obviously there's a field yeah. there, but taking yeah. the ridge is like a mile to the next open field. Yeah, to the next road probably. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you can look across the valley and you can see some of the spots we've been hunting you know, up on that cornfield. Mm -hmm. But it's a, there's a ton of, of potential deer holding areas in that direction. And the food is this way, you know, that food plot up on that ridge. And it's not as if that's been attracting a lot of deer, but there's really nothing other than acorns and browse between that food plot and a mile in that direction. It just amazes me that the deer don't move to those places. Um, and if they were going to, this would seem to be a pretty natural place for them to come through because we're right on the spine of this ridge and any of the deer coming from over in those areas and heading to that food, you know, would, you know, would, you would think come through here. Um, so, you know, it's, we're just trying stuff and we got nothing to lose, uh, you know, and, and you know, again, there could be still something coming. I mean, the last half hour is when we're going to see him probably anyway, because in the, the closer to the end of legal shooting time, the, the more likely you are to see them when they're more or less nocturnal. Uh, tomorrow should be a lot of fun. Uh, our son is, is coming in for at least a day, maybe two, and he's going to have the muzzle odor. And I'm not going to take him to a blind, I don't think, uh, at least not tomorrow. I think we'll just sneak around, uh, walk some of the, the uh, four-wheel drive or you know four-wheeler four trails and just sneak around the timber and see if we can find something. Uh, obviously it doesn't do any good to sit out on the field edges if the deer aren't moving into those places during daylight. I do think though the spot we hunted two nights ago has a lot of potential because there were, as I mentioned in the most recent episode, there were some deer showing up in there on the trail camera. Uh, you know, with with some daylight. But, uh, I mean, Ethan's been, you've been running some cell cameras. Yeah. Are you getting anything in daylight? It seems like the last two days, we were talking about the deer are really starting to show up, like, right at 5 o'clock. So that's 10 minutes before 10 minutes. legal shooting light is over. So is that in the woods or is that on the field? It's right on the field edge. Okay. So maybe it's breaking a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's for whatever reason, maybe the acorns are gone or the deer just, they just gotten bored with walking around in the woods. And they're headed <laughs> to cut cornfields is what they're going to. Yeah. So. That's, uh, that's as much as we know right now. Um, you know, I'm sure you're laughing at where we parked those electric buggies, but again, 
you know, we didn't have much to lose. Uh, I think it would have been comical to see a deer come down that trail and just see, see what it would have done. And maybe it'll still happen. I hold out some hope. If it does, we'll show it to you. Uh, otherwise, uh, again, like I said, I'm gonna be with Drew tomorrow. I'm not sure how much of that I'm gonna film. I'm gonna run some uh, video on that, but I'm not gonna mess up his hunt by being right in his back pocket when he's sneaking around. So I might film from you know, a little bit more of a vantage point and just give him a chance to try to sneak up on stuff, which would be pretty cool. Uh, but I'll have something for you there. Well, I appreciate you joining us and uh, see you right back here again tomorrow for the next episode of Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails. And remember to always dream big.